everyone, this is Nicklore4567, and welcome back to another Thomcraft tutorial. Today we will be learning about all of the new, um, all of the wands in Thomcraft. Well, not all of, well, all the specialty wands. So, these five right here, and I'll show you how do you get them with the aspects and their functionality. Um, so yeah, that's about it. For these guys, and I'll also show you some of the enchantments that, well, all of the enchantments that, sh that are special to the wands. Um, so yeah, we will get started. Um, I'm also going to just show you the grafter because that is something that I uh, discovered. Um, as you can see, there have been add-ons to this for the forestry mod. So this is one of the add-ons is the, not the grafter, the scoop, the uh, thomium scoop. So. I'm just going to do that one first, so I have it right here, and, oh, I can't put that back in there? Oh, well, <laughs> since, oh wait, I could just look at it. So, um, yeah, so, a thallium scoop, it takes, um, 100% of the little working, well, it takes some of the little, little working thing that you get from flint, um, magic, some spider, some insectio or something, that's what you get from, like, string and, uh, insects related stuff, and, uh, the wood, so, um, yeah, to show you guys a little bit better, um, string has the aspect, that spider aspect, that ki the first one, that's what that other aspect is, and um, it also, there was, so great wood is a great thing for um, the magic aspect, and that was, that's the last one, it's also a great thing for the wood aspect, it gives you seven, so that's both of those, and then you can use flint for the working aspect, which is the first one, the blue one. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I had to sneeze. Um, but yeah. So, those four aspects will give you, um, a thomium scoop, and it is possible to improve the durability of the scoop by creating them out of strong, sterner materials. While you're at it, it may be helpful to enable them to be enchanted with restore restorative magics. So, yeah, what it's basically saying is that the Thaumium Scoop, um, you can use it for, like, it's more durable than the regular Scoop, and also, since it's made out of Thaumium, and it's a part of Thaumcraft, you can add repair to it, so you can, um, so you can use it forever. It's basically what that's saying. So the next thing is our first wand. And you guys want to see the scoop, it's pretty basic, it's just like, this pretty much the same thing as like, wool and thomium sticks, no ass, you don't need any aspects or anything. Um, also, you guys may be getting annoyed, but d back here is my node, and as you can see, I made my flux high, and I actually created my own node with some silverwood trees. So, it's like a 900 node, and the flux is high, so when the, f when the flux gets out of hand, um, I told you guys that wisps would spawn from the nodes, like they spawn directly from the nodes, so I'm just showing you that you can encase your node in glass and then the wisps will spawn there. So, um, yeah, I think there were a few in here, yeah. What I have right now is a Vaj, and that's from the Industrial Craft, I'm pretty sure, or a Greg Tech, something like that. Um, and it just auto-kills them, so I just like when you hit it, when you hit the wisps, it just kills them instantly. So that's why I just am using this for the moment. And yeah. And as you can see, another one already spawned. So, um, yeah. You just have to kill them. And then you hear that little sizzle sound when they die. And yeah. And killing them also brings the flux down. So maybe by the end of this episode, the flux will be at moderate. Um, it was. It used to be at dangerous, and then I started killing the wisps, and now it's at uh, high only. So um, yeah. But the next thing is our actual wand excavation. Now this is the wand 
in the book that is the green wand and it's like it goes with the earth so that is the stone which is saxum the working thing that you get from flint uh, metallium which you can get from iron and then um, precantatio which you which is the magic aspect and you can get that from great wood like I showed before so yeah and this one says a logical step in your exploration of magic would be to find a way to utilize it as a mining tool studying earth moving and mining tools should show you the way so I can just learn that really quick get that out of there and so basically it's pretty easy it's just a one of apprentice earth shards and then some aspects not even like expensive aspects at that and it says you have successfully adapted to the enchantment on an apprentice wand you have turned it into a tool capable of moving vast amounts of earth and stone with little effort simply point it at what you want to ex excavate and the magic does the rest tougher materials take longer to mine and anything other than earth stone or similar materials will take much longer to mine so natural materials like uh like um dirt and stone and ooh I didn't mean to do that dirt stone and um like I think sand is a part of that too so natural materials like those things it doesn't it finishes off really easily but um other materials like cobblestone it takes a little bit longer cuz that's not natural made so yeah but um also my volcano I transformed into this nice volcano full of the infused ores and so this will pretty much replenish my aurora easily because they take it from the infused ores so this is this used to be a water infused ore but then it became dull when all the magic was sucked out of it so that's how you get a dull shard um, and yeah that's a good demonstration because we have quite a few of those on the mountain that were just sucked completely but um yeah so we're gonna make this uh, exca wand of excavation earth shard we need and I already showed you guys how to get the wand of apprentice so we're just gonna use our cheaty creative mode to <laughs> get this um, and the wand of the apprentice goes here and earth shards go there and now we just need the flint how much flint does that have? one okay so flint we'll get four of those and then it also needed oh wait uh, it's iron not metallium well we're not gonna yeah I'm pretty sure that's what it was okay 16 and each iron has 8 so it's pretty good um now I just need some water and if we dump that in there and also I noticed that my wand of apprentice is over there okay so if we dump that in there and then we can pour one four and now it's available to be crafted in this wand of excavation awesome okay so this wand is pretty awesome in that well all the wands are awesome in their own way Um, in that it mines at a very fast pace and also to use the wands um, we forgot to look in the thumb this thing too so it says oh is that yeah I already read that so um pretty much this wand so let's try it on sand oh, I keep on forgetting I'm in creative mode it pretty much destroys sand pretty fast and um, grass, it'll probably destroy pretty fast. Yeah, it does. And dirt, even faster. So this is a good. And look at how fast it destroys stone. You know, really useful tool um for mining. And uh, one of the uses that I like to use for it is when I'm destroying silverwood trees when I'm in, out in the wild. And instead of waiting for the leaves to decay, I just use this on it. And then you sometimes. And then, like, you can get a sapling from that, too. So, that's what I usually do to get my silverwood tree saplings. Um, I just saw, yeah. But, um, today, I, well, that's pretty much what it does. Um, I want, and then, on something like cobblestone, which is not naturally made. Well, 
let's compare it. Cobblestone and smooth stone. And now we get just regular stone. And we'll put that right there. Right there. So which one do you think will take longer based on what I just read? The cobblestone, right? So the smooth stone. Pretty instant. Not like 100% instant, but you know. Cobblestone takes a little bit longer. Still doesn't take forever, but just a little bit longer. Um, if we had a block of cobblestone, you'd be able to see that a lot better because it works a lot faster. But um, yeah. So it's pretty useful. And um, that's good that it's useful. And uh, I'll get into all of the. Um, I'll get into all of the. Uh, function all of the enchantments for the wands when I have all of them so yeah that's all I have to do for that one and I'll be right back when I have researched the next wand okay guys I have researched a second wand and that wand is the wand of fire and that takes Ignis which you can get easily from Netherrack Rikantachi which you can get from Greatwood again Tellum which you can get <laughs> I, I don't think that I pronounced that right you can get that from Arrows easily and uh, Fractus, which you get from Cobblestone easily. So that gives me my Wand of Fire. And it just says you think that you might be able to adapt the enchantment on a normal wand, turning into a fire hurling weapon of destruction. And that is definitely what it is a fire hurling weapon of destruction. So, if we look down our Thaumonicon, you can see that you have successfully adapted to the enchantment on an apprentice wand. It is now capable of sending forth a cone of elemental fire burning all in its wake. However, the wand has lost the ability to renew its charge and will eventually run out of energy and break. So we just need three fire shards, Ignis and Tome. So, pretty easy. I'm just going to use these uh, Essentia bottles since they have eight each. Um, it's easier, pretty much. <laughs> Did that fire? Okay, so yeah. Although, I'm probably just gonna use the, uh, now I think of it, probably just gonna use the arrows, because those are more, those are better. Because uh, it only needs four, and this will, the other thing would have gave off eight. These are um, also something that you can get later, and I'll be going over those um, another day. Yeah. Oh, hmm, didn't even set it up. Um, fire shard. And our wand of apprentice will just use it like that. So now we have a wand of fire. Awesome. So, um, ignore these big lines too, by the way. Hopefully they don't annoy you too much. Um, we have, uh, let's just test it out on a, let's test it on a zombie since they seem to have a lot of health sometimes. Not angry zombie, just zombie. So this is actually a weapon. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. They're gonna burn it. Let's just test on a spider then. Swarm spider. I kinda wanna. King hedge spider. <laughs> Making me curious. Um, yeah, a few spiders though. Um, and this is a weapon, like I said before. So it catches them on fire and you can kill them easily. Yeah, and you can take on a large amount of. Like, large number of things with this. And yeah. It's it's really good if you have a bunch of mobs and you just go like and just destroy them. I'm, you know what I'm not sure of is if it actually sets wood on fire. Um, no, it doesn't set blocks on fire, just mobs. Okay, so it's safe to use in your wooden home. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah, it basically shoots out fire, and I think it really looks nice um, in F3. Like, if you're looking at yourself, no, I don't want to look at myself that way. I mean, F5. If you're looking, it looks really cool. And then if you um, fly like that, it looks super awesome. Like, it looks like you're, like, shooting up into the sky. Or if you go like that, it does look cool, too. Yeah. Looks very cool. Very interesting wand. Um, there's actually... So, 
the way that I think that the creators divided this thumb, divided these was that these are all weapons and these are all um just wands that you use for like useful stuff like tools weapons on one side and tools on the other because these are all weapons and then these are all tools so yeah that's what they did but um yeah let's move on to the next wand all right guys so the next wand is the wand of frost and it's another attack wand so it's basically all the same aspects as the fire wand except this one has um gallum which is like which you can get from snow or snowballs and that pretty much just um is like cold ice frost and stuff so yeah wand of frost pretty much the same thing and this one shoots out little ice chunks um you think you might be able to adapt to the enchantment on a normal wand, turning into an ice hurling weapon of destruction. So yeah, pretty much the same thing as the other wand, but uh, just different. So this one is one of Apprentice Water Shards. Yeah, can all tell them. So pretty easy. Um, let's get our wand of Apprentice. Let's actually get another one just for future. I know we're gonna need a bucket of water. Um, but yeah. So, now we need our water shards. One, two, three. And yeah, this wand is really pretty cool. Um, it's a little uncontrollable. <laughs> oh, just got a little lag spike there. A little uncontrollable, but it, it's good overall. So that gives you three each, so six should be eighteen. Oh, oops, I just deleted that, didn't I? There we go. Wand of Frost. So, let's experiment on some spiders. <laughs> so, if we have our Wand of Frost, it shoots out little ice chunks. And it's very cool. In this, it's very loud, too. It doesn't do much damage, but you can rapid fire it. And it has a little knockback effect, so. Yeah. Um, really cool. It's really good. I like to use it at mob farms when you, like, have to kill a ton of mobs. Um, before I got what we're probably going to be covering next episode, I like to use this. Um, yeah, but the ice chunks, they, they melt pretty easily, but yeah. As you can see, they stick into the ground, then they start to slowly dissolve, which I think is a really cool effect. Um, how they just slowly melt to the ground. Really cool. Um, And if we come over here, we'll just see that if we shoot it at the water, it'll turn the water into ice. So it's like an automatic ice maker. So it's pretty cool. Um, no more need for ice farms. <laughs> With this, if you want ice, like just pour down water and then just use this thing, I guess. Um, don't even need silk touch anymore. But um, yeah, that's pretty much what it does. And a pretty cool wand. Did we look in this? I mean, don't think we did. So it says, hurling chunks of ice, particularly accurate. Yeah, it's not accurate. Um, Lost ability to renew its charge, like all the other ones. Um, it, ice chunks will also freeze any water source blocks you come into contact with. So pretty much all that I just um, explained is what this wand can do. So, yeah. And I'll see you guys when I'm ready for the next wand, I guess. Alright guys, so here we have the last attack wand. And this just takes um, all the same stuff as the last two wands except it also instead of ice or um, fire it needs potentia which is power energy and strength because this is the wand of lightning yes and the wand of lightning pretty much is probably gonna say close the same stuff I'm just gonna demonstrate this one um yeah lightning hurling weapon of destruction I'm just gonna demonstrate this one and not really read the monocon um because it doesn't really have anything extra than really the fire one did, you know? Um, but we are going to need air shards for this one. I already have my Wand of Apprentice. I need a water bucket. 
and let's just come over here. Wait, no, water bucket needs to go in there. So this is going to take um, four arrows, I'm pretty sure. One, two, three, four. And then it was special to you as Potentia, so it's going to take 16 of Potentia. I pretty much got this thing down by now, since so it has two. It's eight. Yeah. Once you get, like, the first few things done with the wand, like, once, because it's basically all the wands are, like, pretty closely related to the bomb thing. So it's not really hard to research stuff after a while. It's just hard to find out what stuff actually does um, sometimes. But I'm here to t show you guys the research and what it does. So best place to be, I guess. Um, but yeah, it shoots out the light. It's a really cool effect. It seems to be stronger than the um, other wands, but I'm not sure. It is very powerful, though. Um, it's a very good uh, long-range weapon, I think. Shoot right at you, and you can. It has all these wands have pretty cool effects. Um, yeah. Again, you can just go like this, and make it look like amazing, or you can go like this, and make it look like the sky, like you're controlling the lightning in the sky, or lightning's hitting you. Um, cool things I've just discovered, which you can do with this wand. But yeah, that's basically what it does. I mean, just harms animals, just like the last two wands. So these are our harming wands. Pretty cool stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm going to research the final wand, which I hope I'll be able to do. I haven't been able to get it to work because um, the ass, like, um, other research is interfering with it. But um, if I can, then I will. If I can't, then I'll just show you guys what you have to research to get it, and I will. Um, and I'll just pull it out of my inventory, and I'll just tell you guys what it does. If I can't get that to work, okay. So I'm gonna try for a bit, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So I couldn't get it to um, give me what I wanted, but I will show you guys what you have, to, what aspects you have to use to get this wand, and hopefully you guys will be able to get it. Um, I kept on getting Thaumaturge's robes, or like, Axe of the Stream stuff. We're gonna cover all that in another episode. Um, not this one though. So, this one is Permutatio, you're gonna need Permutatio, Precantatio, and um, it wouldn't show it on this, so I took it out. And then you're also going to need Instrumentum, which is this one thing. And you'll only need three aspects for this one. So it's really cool, and um, you're probably gonna need 16 per per cantati or whatever, and then uh, some working stuff. Like you're gonna need 16 of the switcheroo arrows, and then um, you're gonna need four of the instrumental stuff thing. So yeah, we're just gonna type it in. I mean, there's so much. There's only so much you can do, right? So, but this one is actually the wand that I demonstrate on this mountain. This is the wand of equal trade. So basically, what this wand does is I can take. So let's just do. Let's just do. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate on infused ore, but this can be done on pretty much any block. So if it's a part of vanilla Minecraft or the mod, or even red power blocks work too. A lot of blocks work with this one. I think maybe possibly all of them just by the way it's programmed. So if you shift, right click on a block, it will appear down there, and that's basically the, the box in inventory. So, um, so let's just take um, actually, let's just go over here and let's do so there's a cheat thing that you can do in creative which is get an infinite huh? Yeah, infinite water blocks or whatever. I don't know where they just gave that to. Oh, okay, there we go. Infinite water and fuse stone, so. Pretty cool. Um, so if I come over here, and I right click. So this is me um, right clicking without any, like, n without shifting, just me right clicking. So if we come over here and actually take this sand, um, and we make a little grid, you can see 
how much it actually even um hesitates changes. And let's say I had this sand block right here and there were grass blocks surrounding it. If I use this on the sand block, it would only change the sand block. It wouldn't change the grass block. Same if I just had the sand block here and I only used it on grass block. It would change the grass blocks, but the sand block would stay the same. So if we actually just come over here, I think it would be easier to demonstrate this. And then we just put that down there. You can see a perfect square. Um, how big is this square? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so seven. So three from each side. It'll go out three from the sides, and then make a perfect square like this. So that's a lot that it can transitate. And don't think that you can just say, "Oh, awesome! I'll just you." you use this on a block of diamonds and just make myself an infinite supply of those. No, you can't do that. It actually takes it out of your inventory. So if we get rid of this water infused stone and then we just do water and I only take a stack. You'll watch it in my inventory, um you'll watch it decrease in my inventory as I keep on um, as I keep on using the wand, you'll see it go down in my inventory until I don't have any more and I can't do anything with it. Now the last thing that I think I should mention about this wand is that it, if you don't want it to do that whole area you can just left click with it and it'll only do one block. So that's really cool. Um, yeah. So if you wanted to be like precise with it but if you just want to do what I'm doing and just make this whole mountain out of used so which is which is not like possible in <laughs> vanilla really um not vanilla um, in you know non creative <laughs> survival it's not really possible but um cuz i don't think you can silk touch in fuse store not sure about that don't quote me on that one so um yeah but that's how i made this gigantic mountain of it and it's a really cool block but this is a great demonstration i mean a really cool one this is just a great demonstration of what you can really do with it i use it so much in my ftb nation series um just for design purposes but um yeah so that's all of the wands now to close off this episode we are going to take a look at the enchantments that you can put on the wand so, if you look in your found monicon, there'll be this neat little thing that says, um, enchantments, and, um, potency, frugal, charging, and treasure are the ones that you can use on wands. So, potency increases, um, the damage, range, or area of the wand is applied to. So, that means if it's applied to an attack wand, then it will increase the amount of attack like the strength of the attack if it's applied to a um a, the wand of equal trade it'll make make a different like a better a bigger space right it'll take up a like it'll make the wand um trade off a bigger space um and then range so um range is for all the wands pretty much Especially the one of excavation, though. That one has a set range, but it'll increase that. And then frugal, it'll make it lose less durability. So, you know, if you want to have... It's like unbreaking for wands. Um, charging actually takes nearby Aurora, and it uses it to replenish the wand's durability. So, if you have charging on your wand, and you're in an area with a bunch of Aurora, then you can pretty much use your wand and just let it sit there and repair itself, which is very cool. Um, I suggest getting that on all wands. And treasure is for wand excavation and equal trade, and it functions like a fortune enchantment. So, you can obviously understand why that's used for the um, wand of excavation, but the, it's used for the wand of equal trade because um, because if you break if you break a wand with the equal tree, it's not going to give you a back silk touch. It'll give you a back as if you actually broke that block, because it re it gives it back to you in your inventory. As you can see, I got a ton of dirt from uh, my demonstration. Yeah, but um, we're actually let me show you guys that right now. I I don't think I mentioned that before. So yeah, so right now we have two stacks and three dirt. If we use this wand, to f oh wait, I need more infused store. Uh, in Fused. There we go. So now we have 
Bum, bum, bum. Two stacks and 49. So pretty much, it's useful. <laughs> like that. So if you want to, you also get the block back. So if I use that on like diamond ore or something, it would give me back one diamond. And then if we had the treasure enchantment on it, it would give me back more than one diamond. So, well, sometimes. So yeah. And also, um, if we just enchant, you can also just enchant it straight up in an enchantment table. You don't need the enchantment books, although you can get these enchantments on books. You don't just need the enchantment books to get them. So like, I can just do that, and it works the same as all the other enchantments. So yeah, I got frugal on that one. You know, some things are more rare, some things aren't. But I just, I use, I usually use, I usually um enchant my wands to start off, and then I just use books to make it like better, so that I have that chance of getting the charging enchantment. So that's really what I look for in my wands. But it really depends on what you want to use them for, I guess. But um yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, we just went over all of the base, all of the um specialty wands that are special to. Di um, to their, a special to their element, and then we also went over the thomium scoop, which I didn't like, yeah, I kind of went over that, and that's used on, in the forestry mod again, thomium scoop, and it's used on hives to get the bees from them, so if you guys know what a regular scoop is, just think of a thomium scoop as something that can be enchanted with thomcraft uh, enchantments, and is also, uh, you can use it more. Just think of it like that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. My name is Nick Lore four five six seven, and also one last thing, a lot of people in the comments have been saying like, is he a boy or is he a girl or whatever. I am actually a boy, and um, I really don't enjoy the spam that that creates. I kind of like to see like suggestions for my next video or what you guys want to see, not arguing over that kind of stuff because that kind of stuff I just think is stupid, and I honestly don't really care that you guys are commenting that. I mean, I'll answer you, but, um, just at a point, it's just, like, just give me cool stuff. L not cool stuff, just give me, like, suggestions and stuff. Actual helpful comments, because it's pretty much just spam. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. My name is Nicola4567, and I will catch you around. Goodbye.